Talk to everyone how they can get the facts on the authority of Scripture so that if they're at the work or wherever, they can intelligently respond to a friend who has no biblical basis at all in their life. Right. I got it, I got it. I know your damn words, all right? right. I mean, I interviewed leading scholars on this in the book, and uh, Bruce Metzger, as you know, the leading scholar in the world on the text of the New Testament, and uh, Princeton professor emeritus, a uh, great scholar, and others, and, and tried to establish through the in interviews that, you know, the New Testament of the Bible is trustworthy in terms of the history that it tells us. <laughs> no, Colonel Sanders, you're wrong that the Gospels are, are rooted in eyewitness testimony, that they're written so early that within the lives of um, eyewitnesses who would have, uh, have spoken up had the disciples been going around proclaiming things that were exaggerated and false. We have archaeological confirmation of many... The writers were uh, careful in the history that they recorded. We have, you know, tw what, 24,000 manuscripts of the New Testament compared to the next second place, which is uh, uh, Homer's Iliad. I think there's 600 of those. So we have a great amount of manuscript evidence so we can be confident of its transmission through history. Mama's wrong again. <laughs> Um, I mean, we can have as Christians strong confidence in the reliability of the Bible. And for Dan Brown to disparage the four Gospels and then to choose instead these so-called Gnostic Gospels that were written in the second, third, and fourth century. She's not a Christian! Long after the fact, who have no historical basis, who are written with a Greek bias. <laughs> and uh, whose names of Mary Magdalene and Philip are attached to them, even though they had nothing to do with them. And if you read them, I, mean, I encourage people, go ahead and read the Gnostic Gospels and read it next to the Gospel of Luke. You read the Gospel of Luke, here you have this first century investigative reporter, so to speak. Now you listen here! He's not the Messiah! He's a very naughty boy! Speak. ...who says, I carefully investigated everything. Go to laugh at me. So I could report to you about the certainty of what took place. And you read it, and even though he's reporting on amazing things... Klaatu, Marada, <laughs> ...like the resurrection of Jesus. Please, please, listen. I've got one or two things to say. Yes! 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 Look, you've got it all wrong. You don't need to follow me. You don't need to follow anybody. It is with a sober mindset. It is with accuracy. It is with a careful delineation of what actually took place. Even those instances that were embarrassing. To the, to the disciples. They made sure they were in there because it's what happened. For instance, the fact that the empty tomb of Jesus was discovered first by women. And that probably yeah. when he was around, there was no Jesus Christ stuff but going they, on. No, no, they still but had they Christians had their, back then. No, they they I don't want to be sick. I believe mean, they had their gods. The Greeks, the Greeks they believed. They had, they had, they had Christians and they had... No, I'm well, doing well, the actual shocked thing here. now. Why? You know, in first century Jewish culture, the testimony of women was not accepted. Right. And it was not considered reliable. Don't you remember what your mama told you about girls? I don't ever want you associating with little girls. Why not, Mama? Because little girls are the devil! So if they were going to make things up, they never would have said women discover the tomb empty. It would have hurt their case among the people they were trying to convince. They would have said, well, Peter discovered it empty. It was John. He discovered it empty. They would have made it if they were making it up. Don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. Why did they say women discovered it empty, even though it hurts their case to their first century uh, counterparts? Because it's false. Because that's what happened. And even though it was embarrassing, they still were faithful to the truth and put it in the Bible. So I think we can have great confidence that these records... It's in the guilt-producing control business. Unlike these other later apocryphal documents, um, you know, we have, we have confidence that they tell us the truth about Jesus. Repeat it after me, bitch. I come in the name of Jesus. It really is an attack on Christianity. <laughs> because you can't have a Da Vinci Code style in Biblical Christianity rendition. They're just yeah. too diametrically different. Yes! We are all different! I'm not. When, when you talk about the New Testament documents, and you know, which would be a synonym with all those New Testament books, they are uniquely inspired. Right? Every thing mm -hmm. 
came out of the Word, or the Word, you back to seed again. Uh -huh. Words are things, or they're word things. So when I say words, I just release a thing. But this weekend in our community, Lee, we have two churches that have brought in either Jesus Seminar people or these liberal clerics that are actually training their congregation to doubt the authority of the Bible. <laughs> And Elaine from Princeton and others have already been here. And, and, and what does it boil down to? Jerry, one of the steps that led me to atheism, when it was as a young man, I took a course on, on the historical Jesus, the New Testament. Taught by a skeptic, and that was one of the three big steps. That and Darwinism, and, and I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. And other things that led me into a life of atheism. I mean, it, it, the tragedy of that is, why would we as Christians give up our strong card, which is the truth that we have? I don't think hell exists. Religion is always in the control business. I mean, we have an unfair advantage in the marketplace of ideas, and that is we have truth on our side. Who is that scripture where Samuel was talking and, and you talk to him about answering him, Eli? We ought to be emphasizing that. We ought to be pointing people toward the confidence they can have in what it is that the New Testament tells us about the life, teachings, miracles, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But there is a, there is a place in our lives that, that can only be filled by the Lord. You know, you have a lot of money, and a lot of you do. When I was a skeptic, and I began to investigate the historical underpinnings, for instance, for the resurrection of Jesus, the corner pin of Christianity, you know, anybody can claim to be the Son of God. I'm Jesus Christ, man. Jesus proved it by returning from the dead. <laughs> And when I saw the avalanche of evidence that points so powerfully toward the truth of that, Behold the atheist's nightmare. That is what convinced me that Jesus is who he claimed to be. 